Hello friends, let's talk about the poem To Paint a Water Lily by Ted Hughes. I wonder how many of you have heard of this poem. This was a poem that I discovered very recently because uh, this poem doesn't usually figure in uh, anthologies. So anyway, I'm glad that I happened to read this poem because it is a very beautiful one. This poem is quite different from the usual poems of uh, Ted Hughes. It is titled To Paint a Water Lily and here the poet is trying to, as he says in the title, to paint a water lily. Let us see how he does it. So a quick reading of the poem. A green level of lily leaves roofs the pond's chamber and paves the fly's furious arena. Study these, the two minds of this lady. First observe the air's dragonfly that eats meat, that bullets by or stands in space to take aim. Others as dangerous comb the hum under the trees. There are battle shouts and death cries everywhere hereabouts, but inaudible. So the eyes praise to see the colors of these flies. Rainbow their arcs, spark or settle, cooling like beads of molten metal through the spectrum. Think what worse is the pond bed's matter, of course. Prehistoric, bedragoned times, crawl the darkness with Latin names, have evolved no improvements there, jaws for heads that set stare, ignorant of age as of hour. Now paint the long-necked lily flower, which deep in both worlds can be still as a painting, trembling hardly at all, though the dragonfly alight, whatever horror nudge her root. So as I mentioned earlier, a poem that is very different from the usual Ted Hughes poem. So here what he is trying to do is he is trying to tell us about a water lily. So he or the narrator of the poem is standing somewhere by the bank of a pond and let's see how he describes. A green level of lily leaves roofs the pond's chamber and paves the fly's furious arena. So, uh, what a beautiful opening sentence. He says, now the pond, the top, the surface of the pond is covered with lily leaves. That's why he says, a green level of lily leaves roofs the pond's chamber. So, the pond, what is under it is a chamber and this green lily leaf leaves form a roof for the pond's chamber and this very same green level of lily leaves acts as a pavement for the fly's furious arena so this this layer of leaves separates two worlds one there is the life going on under the pond two there is this life of the flying creatures above the water level or flying in the air so this is a curtain it is a kind of a separation between these two levels these the two minds of this lady so here the reference of the lady is to this uh, lily uh, this uh, water lily and so the two minds so this lady has two minds one that belongs to the wat water because she stems from the water and the other that belongs to the open air because she blooms out into the open air above the water level and then he looks around and he paints a picture of all that he sees around him. First observe the air's dragonfly that eats meat. So you can see the dragonfly that eats meat, a, a picture of um, a violence there, uh, an insectivorous or a carnivorous uh, dragonfly that bullets by or stands in space to take aim. So those of you who have seen a dragonfly you know why he uh, says that it bullets by or stands in the space because it is shaped like a dragonfly and so this uh, there are many dragonflies and they shoot across the air like bullets at high speed and sometimes they hover 
in the air that's why stands in space to take aim so they stand there and they're taking aim at some insect that they are going to catch and others as dangerous comb the hum under the trees there are battle shouts and death cries everywhere hereabouts but inaudible so he says if you listen carefully if you just uh, hold your breath and listen carefully you can hear a lot of noises there it's not just the droning of this dragonfly but you can hear a lot of noises under the trees there are so many insects birds all flying helter skelter all seeking food so there are battle shouts and death cries everywhere hereabouts but inaudible they are all inaudible the sounds are muted uh, because maybe because the person is not exactly listening to them so unless you you uh, divert your attention to it all these murmurs and drones cannot be heard and then he says but you can see the colors so the eye sprays to see the colors of these flies rainbow their arcs spark or settle cooling like beads of molten metal through the spectrum so rainbow colors spark off <coughs> their wings and they shine and sometimes the colors look like molten metal so there is uh, an array of colors all over different insects flying and the sunlight falling on their wings and being being reflected in a wide spectrum of colors and so this is the picture that you see above the water so that is one layer of existence and then now he goes under the pond think what worse is the pond beds matter of course and he says just imagine what you are going to find under the pond because under the water there are so many creatures uh, they are kind of crawling in the darkness in the safe darkness in the wet slimy darkness of the pond and he tells us that they might be creatures from prehistoric be dragon times be dragon i guess he means the time when dragons were alive okay dragons we know are mythical beings or imaginary creatures but we believe that all these creatures once lived and so under the pond in the slime you would definitely find prehistoric be dragon uh, times animals that have been there since then without much of an evolution taking place and they crawl there with latin names he is referring i guess to all these uh, zoological names of these creatures and the botanical names of all the uh, the uh, the water plants that can be found under the pond and so they crawl the darkness with latin names have evolved no improvements there means these creatures have not evolved all the other creatures have changed with time but these are so kind of steeped in the slime they are so far removed from any kind of progress that they must have been like whatever they are now they must have been like that years back even centuries back and jaws for heads they still have jaws instead of fully formed heads and the set stare they have cold eyes that just stare at you ignorant of age as of hour they are unaware they are totally and blissfully unaware of the passage of time of the passage of ages of hours so that is the world under the pond now paint the long necked lily flower which deep in both worlds can be still as a painting trembling hardly at all so he says now in contrast to these two worlds you have this beautiful long necked lily flower and the flower is deep in both worlds because as mentioned earlier she stems or her roots Uh, she stems from this slime under the pond or her roots are firmly entrenched in this um, in this uh, soil under the pond whereas she comes out of the water in um, splendid glory as a beautiful lily flower so she belongs to both worlds she belongs under the pond and she belongs above the pond too so that is why which deep in both worlds can be still as a painting trembling hardly at all though the dragonfly alight whatever horror nudge her root so she has uh, a poise a grace 
an equanimity, a kind of a balance that she has achieved through her experience of living in two worlds maybe and so she doesn't tremble she's so graceful she stands without trembling when even when the dragonfly comes and sits on her alights on her and maybe some water creature nudges her root she is shaken from the bottom and from the top but then not even a tremor passes through her means she is so beautifully poised nothing can affect her nothing can shake her she has found her space of existence between these two worlds she remains a picture a painting a beautiful picture between these two entirely different worlds she remains the connecting link between the two of them the world underwater and the world above it so that is the picture of the water lily and I guess nobody else has painted a water lily like Ted Hughes has. It is so picturesque, you can almost see the pond and uh, the thick layer of leaves and the slime underneath and creatures crawling there. Just as you can see all these insects flying around, the buzzing and the droning of all the different insects, the colour sparking off their wings when sunlight falls upon them. So altogether he drowns us in a, a kind of a sea of colours and at the same time he positions this lily in a space of her own and you admire her for her grace and her beauty. So I guess uh, that is all I have to say about the poem to paint a water lily.